This video highlights some powerful new features for working with drop-down boxes in the dialog component. So in this uh, dialog over here we have a drop-down box that is dynamically populated from a SQL database. So you can see if we go to choices we can see that we're um, pulling our choices here from the product names table in a uh, MySQL database. So when we go over to working preview here we can see that the choices in the uh, drop-down list are products 1 through 8 <coughs> and we also have uh, the uh, product field inside a repeating section um, over there. So now what we're going to uh, show is how if the um, SQL uh, table gets uh, updated uh, through some external means how we can refresh the choices in the drop-down box. So let's go back to our uh, MySQL uh, database over here and add in a, uh, a new row. So we'll go here and type in say product uh, 9 and we'll just put it in an arbitrary type of C. And now we'll go back uh, to our uh, dialog component and you can see that obviously product 9 is not uh, visible. But now I'm going to uh, execute uh, this button over here and uh, an Ajax callback takes place and now you can see product 9 is now available in the list and it's available in the list for every single instance of this control inside the repeating section and even when I click the um, add new row to the repeating section that product is available over there. So if we go behind the scenes and look at uh, what this refresh list uh, button does uh, we can see here that the uh, refresh list button is just calling a new method of the dialog object called refresh drop down box choices and then um, the name of the control that you'd like to update and it's important to point out that if we look at the choices for this drop down box over here we can see that the drop down box had a pre-choice of um, add new choice which has a, a stored value of underbar underbar naught uh, new choice. So when we make this uh, callback to refresh the list, um, the uh, pre and post choices get added in automatically. So uh, the whole list gets recomputed and then every instance of the repeating section uh, gets, uh, gets filtered. But um, in addition to just uh, filtering the list as we've done, uh, to refreshing the list as we've done over here, uh, we can also refresh the list and simultaneously apply a filter. So if we go back and look at our data uh, in the list, we can see that in addition to the product name, we actually have a field called product type. So let's go back now and set the product type there to A and then click the uh, refresh button. So before we click the refresh button, you can see we've got products 1 through 9. But now I'm going to go and click the refresh button. And now we can see that we only have products 1 through 3 and the choices have been set in every single repeating instance row, uh, including the new row as well. So now let's go look at what happens when we click this button over here. So we'll go back to refresh drop down and then go to the um, on click event and we can see that that's just calling a JavaScript function called refresh drop downs. So now let's go look at the uh, refresh drop downs function. So we look here and we can see that refresh dropdowns is um, first getting the value in that dropdown, the product type. So we're uh, reading the value of the product type that we'd like to uh, filter on. And then um, the refresh dropdown box uh, method, the new method that has been added to the dialog, has optional parameters in addition to the name of the control that you'd like to update. You can also specify a filter and um, in this case you can also specify uh, as the third argument the filter parameters. So in the commented out uh, version over here we've just got type equals and then double quote and then the product type which would be A or B or C. So in this case the filter actually says type equals quote A close quote. So the filter expression is complete. It doesn't use parameters. But um, it's always best to use parameters so you can see that in the second um, uh, example over here our filter is um, type equals what product and uh, so let's actually pause here and pick this up in the next video. 
So we're continuing our um, video and uh, uh, you can see here that uh, in the second, uh, in the third argument for refresh drop-down box choices, we've passed in a string of the format, uh, the product type, which is A or B or C, followed by three pipes, then C, which is the the data type of the argument, which is character in this case, and then the argument name. So this is how we passed in the value for this argument. If our filter over here had used more than one argument, then we would have had a, um, a CRLF delimited string here. And of course in JavaScript the uh, backslash n character is used uh, to indicate a, uh, a line break. So we would have had product type, um, three pipes, the data type, then the argument name followed by backslash n and then again the argument value three pipes uh, the data type and then the argument name so all of this is explained uh, inside the uh, insert button over here so if you go there and you say uh, insert method and then refresh drop down box choices you'll see the full documentation and examples over there uh, showing how to use um, the argument parameter. So this um, method here is going to refresh the uh, drop-down box um, for all instances uh, that appear in the repeating section. So there we go and there you can see our filtered uh, drop-down box. So now uh, to continue uh, uh, with the possibilities of, of this new method we can see here that um, that in the drop-down box we um, actually have um, a, a method, a, a choice here called add new choice. So let's go ahead now and see what happens when we um, when we choose that that uh, that choice. So we go here to working preview and there's our products one through nine. So now we'll say add new choice and a little dialog box comes up and we'll go here and say product under bar X and then we'll uh, click the add new product button and then you can see there we've got product number under bar X and that choice has been added to the drop down list not only for that row but for every single row in the repeating section. So in the next video we'll go behind the scenes and show how we added that functionality.